I'd like to welcome everyone to another one of our Mastering Life series. It's all about self-empowerment. And today's theme is honoring your real self, honoring your life. And in honoring your life, it means that each day when you wake up, you can look at all the negative things in your life, your illnesses, which you frequently made more significant in your life, your relationships, which become sometimes overwhelming in the complexity of the problems you're trying to face. And then you think, I've got all these problems in my relationship. I've got problems at work. I've got problems with my physical health. And you forget where you're at in that whole triangulation of difficulties. The discussion then is to help you put it all in perspective. And sometimes that's all we need is just a break, a moment, a little respite from all this anxiety. Take a step back. Just take a deep, relaxing breath and say, where am I at in my own life process? Now, there's a beginning to life and there's an end to the life as we know it before we go on in some other form of energy. But during this 60 years, 80 years, 120 years, whatever it is that is the length of your lifespan, we do have to stop and say, where am I at in this journey? If you don't stop, then you dishonor the day. That day becomes dispensable. And if it's dispensable, it's disposable. And how many times have you gotten to the end of a day and think, oh, God, I'm glad I'm through this day? You know, and then you think, I wish I could get through the week and I've got so many hassles. But then you're looking at that storm. You're looking at that typhoon every day as if you're just a wash in it, helpless. You never look at the rainbow or the pot of gold. Now, you're both the rainbow and you're the pot of gold. And you're also in a process of getting through these storms. One storm after another after another. You know the nice thing about a forest fire is it burns everything down to the ground and everything starts new and healthier in most cases. Yes, things are destroyed. But think of all the things in your life that have been destroyed and you never had anything better grow from it. The people who betrayed you, who've lied to you, the bad choices you've made, knowing in advance you were making a bad choice, but feeling, well, you know, I've committed myself to this. I can't pull back. I've got to honor this person and that belief and that belief. And then one day you wake up and you think, what am I doing all this for? It seems like life is just a big hassle. And then you start looking at the people who only talk about security. I remember growing up in a small town in West Virginia where the people talked about, well, all right, put in your 20 years, you know, with the fire department or with the school system, whatever it was, and retire. And at 17, people were already talking about retirement. They were working towards security because we were told that only when you retire are you secure. As if everything in between that, you're insecure, to which almost all of your choices are going to be based upon fear. Well, if all your choices are based upon fear, then where's joy? Where's spontaneity? Where's appropriate risk taking? Where's just waking up each day and feeling like this is a wonderful life, I'm glad I'm in it, and I don't have all that control that everyone else is trying to exercise, but I don't need that control to have a happy life. Everybody thinks we have to be super in control of everything. And what are you going to do outside of control? Nothing. So your life then is dictated by the measure of what you can control. If you can't control it, you don't do it. Now think of all the things in life you have not done or experienced because you could not control the outcome. Think of places you haven't gone, the people you haven't spoken with because you were afraid. Afraid that maybe you'd do something that looked bad, and then, then you'd feel bad. Or maybe someone would criticize you. Because maybe at some point in your life you were criticized for doing something that someone thought should be more perfect than the way you did it. And now you don't realize that every day you just try to get through a day doing what you can do best, knowing what you're less likely to fail at. And if you're less likely to fail, then in your mind that gives you a sense of security. I'm not going to be hassled or judged or criticized. I'll be responsible and overly responsible. I'll do everything I'm supposed to do for everyone so nobody can say I'm not a nice person. But at the end of the day, when you have not done your meditation and you've not done your hobbies, when you have not done your quality reading of something that is just for you, when you have not had the quality time with your pet, your dog, cat, parakeet, whether you took off the phones and turned off the beepers, where you made yourself inaccessible except to the energy in front of you, when you have not gone out and taken that nice walk without thinking, I've got to rush back because I got to, somewhere I've got to be, always somewhere on that clock. Time reality in your mind is synonymous. 
And that nice meal that you're just going to sit down and decorate a beautiful plate, have a candle, listen to music, relax, and enjoy it. There's no time for that because you were so busy being so responsible to everyone else's needs except your own. So on the one hand, you did what you knew would at least allow you not to be criticized, but you did not do what you needed to do to be spiritually, emotionally, and physically nurtured that day. And that happens more often than not. So by understanding the process of honoring your, your life, then nothing in your life gets dishonored. Now that means we have to make choices. I'm going to go through these. And at any point that if I discuss anything, if there's any question about it, if you're not really aware of what I'm saying, raise your hand. I'm, I'm here to make sure that everyone here and people in Washington, D.C., up and uh, down in Atlanta, over in Morristown, New Jersey, in Los Angeles, in Miami, all the other places that are watching this while we're, we're here talking, they also understand. So let's begin. I'm going to give you a series of of approximately 15 questions. And these questions are meant to provoke us to think. Now sometimes you'll think, well, that's almost too simple a question. I never confuse the complexity of an issue with the simplicity of its resolution. I've never seen problems that are answered on a philosophical level, a spiritual level, that have to be complex. They can be really basic. For example, Focus your energy on what you want to achieve, both short and long term. Now think of that for a moment. Let's break it down. Each day when you wake up, the only thing you have that's uniquely your own is your energy. All right? That's yours. And each person in this room has their own unique energy. And you feel that energy. You feel it's high and lows and just when you're on glide. Now, what if you only honor that and then you said to yourself, I want to achieve something with my energy, all right? Now what is it you want to achieve? What are some of the things that you have not achieved? And that's generally what you want to achieve, what you haven't. Now are these things that you were told you should do or things that you've decided you need to do? Now there is the difference. I do what I feel I need to do, to share, to communicate, to challenge. This is why I believe I was born. I've spent my life trying to honor my gift. Everyone has a gift. No one is without a gift, but not everyone uses the gift. And not everyone uses the gift when they do use it in a way that actually is positive, constructive. I know extremely gifted people that abuse their gift because they have not matured emotionally and spiritually at the level that their gift has allowed them access to the public. So they have a gift and everybody says, wow, what a gift. Then they get all the reward and they abuse it. They're not mature enough. There's a certain need to be mature enough that when someone finally recognizes your gift, you can simply say, thank you. And you don't need anything more than that. Where other people, they're really so insecure about themselves or arrogant, which is also a form of insecurity, that they need a constant feedback and that creates an unhealthy relationship, it creates codependency. And think of all the people who wake up each day and they just go through a perfunctory day. They're just putting in time, eight hours, ten hours. Even in a relationship, they're just hanging out in that relationship because they don't know where else they could feel that kind of comfort. Because frequently when they're on their own or they might have been on their own, they think, gee whiz, there were so many nights I just, I wished I had someone with me. Well, now you do have someone with you. But is that a part of what you're trying to achieve? Are you trying to make someone else responsible for the incompleteness of your own life? How fair is that? How realistic is it? Who could be that person? No one. Are you going to work each day filled with anger but repressing it because you don't want anyone to know that you have that anger or you're un unhappy? So what do you do with an energy that you cannot express? You either have to A, sublimate it, which doesn't change it. It merely diffuses it for a period of time. Gambling, drugs, alcohol, chronic work, gossip, malicious conversation, whatever it is, it's never constructive. People don't have constructive sublimation in our society. 